Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam. Quick hit. Getting to know Bruno Hovert. Why don't you tell us, you know, a little bit about yourself and what you do in the words you would like to describe that? Because I know that you do a lot of different things. Well, I am um, today, I'm like, I'm 48. I'm li- I live in Lyon, France. And I uh, would define myself as a music maker, which what we called, what we can, we can call today producer, not in an executive producer way, but in a technical producing. I mean, I make music, you know, like, uh, uh, so my role is to come from a musical idea, mus- mus- an idea of a song, and to take it to a record till the mastering so um, that's my job and um and i do it the uh on different fields which are mostly black music i mean from and i i would say black and atlantic music so i would include into that south america you know Mm -hmm. Uh, um i mean post African slavery music, I would say. And I would include uh, French music and European music in it. And I would uh, include Northern American uh, music in it too, because like it's so influenced by the African diaspora everywhere. So that's what I, I would define the fields, the musical fields I'm working on. And uh, um, right now, I'm, I've been doing this job for, first record was 95. So it's nearly 30 years old. Uh, the, f- the first one, and uh, now I have s- I can step back a little bit and try to define a sound I would develop I would have developed for the last thirty years, and uh, I I'm, I mean I feel like I I now tend to um, create a sound or sounds mm-hmm. that. Um, don't really exist on the field. I mean, what I mean is that the raw material I try to work with is to get back to the organic stuff. Is to I've been working on electronic music for a long time because there was a need for electronic music on on a on a what I would say I don't want to say the market I would say the musical field you know and uh, and uh, more and more more and more I'm now. Uh, getting back to organic sound simply because I love it, and secondly because I think it's dance floor music, and music in general has been like overflowed it by electronic sounds, which is cool. But I don't want a monopoly of electronic sounds as raw material. It's like 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 um, it's like if every single food you could find was salty or or uh, sweet. But we, uh, we need to balance, you know. So that's why I tend to do the stuff that needs to be done <laughs> on the field, you know. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like the way that you describe that because then it becomes a calling in addition to what you enjoy doing. Um, and so I first found your work. This was probably at this point, what year is it? 15 years or so ago, Uptown Funk Empire yeah. is, was kind of my my first entry point um, to what you do. And I know you've done a lot of work before then. Um, These days, or I guess I should say in general, how do you decide who to work with or what kind of project it is that you want to be a part of? Is there something that, I don't know, kind of comes to you that makes you say, okay, yes, this is definitely something I'd like to do or I'd like to collaborate with this particular Um, artist? I I collaborate most of them. I, 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 for most of the tunes, I do every single instrument on myself, you know. So um, the only need uh, I have for collaboration um, uh, are the singers, you know. Okay. And uh, and it's really like everyday life and uh, meeting some musicians, singers on the tour, uh, all friends or friends of friends. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, the closer it is to me, the best it is, you know, to to because music production is something quite you're quite isolated, you know, in a it's not a cave, you know, but it's it's a studio, it's, so it's like very very um, solitary, and uh, that's why that's why I need this is soul music, you know, I make soul music, so I need I need to have like connections with the people I'm working on. I'm working with um, just to go the same direction and to to express the same feeling. You know, it's, it's like, like soul music doesn't really have meanings. It's just we express feelings and we expect the people to feel sometimes the same way or to have the music expressing something to them, you know. So, so um, I don't give a shit to have them sync the same things, the same sounds, to have the same... Uh, with with my collaborations, so it's just like it's just a question of of feeling. So we can uh, have a soulful tune that is more likely to to express stuff and emotions and whatever uh, to to the people. So the tune can become something special, personal for them. I mean, I try I try to make music and collaborate with people and try to give material, musical material, the same as I want to receive when I listen to music. You know, <laughs> yeah, um, and okay, so thinking about that, I had read somewhere um that you are mostly self taught you know multi instrumentalist um I <clears throat> identify with that quite a bit, um everything that I do um in addition to my you know my full time job are things that I've learned on my own over time and and that's that's a different entry point than someone who had you know a very traditional classical training i'd be curious to know your thoughts on what that may have afforded you being self-taught um versus coming up through you know a particular program or or something like that well i would say it's 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 question it's it's maybe a question of generation i'll tell you why um um when i started you know as a teenager in the late uh 80s um, the only way to make music was to, uh, to learn guitar or piano, you know, that was the way, you know, so that's mm-hmm. what I did. And then in the, in the early nineties come the samplers, which were very expensive. So we were, we had to make teams to gather money and buy one sampler for different producers. That's what we did. And, uh, and after that, you know, like getting into production, because with a guitar or a piano, you can't produce with a sampler, you can start producing some tunes, you know, because it's a, it's because it's a recording machine in itself. Um, but I think, I think that this way of sample, the, the, the fact that sampling music in a, in a, in the early nineties, Mm-hmm. Uh, is something really important because you learn to listen to record, to listen to the music, and not to listen to one special instrument, but to 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 see it as a as a as a whole, you know, like like a bunch of instruments working together creates like a, uh, a super sound or not. I'm sorry, thinking about labels like CTI or Blue Note, which was which were the main stuff I was searching for, and uh, so. I mean, the fact after that, I um, bought more instruments like guitars and uh, bass guitar and uh, and keyboards. But trying to trying to 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 find and to compose the perfect loop, so like Moody Man did, which is a super massive influence for me, mm-hmm. uh, Prince Paul and Moody Man, definitely. You know, um, this this fact that we try trying to find the perfect loop. Because I love disco music, you can you know because you know Uptown Funk and you know, and so I'm not want to make the best tunes like super super tight music like super uh, virtuoso uh, bass playing. No, no, no. I just want to have the right bass lines I can stand mm-hmm. being looped for five minutes. You know, yeah. so so I mean, it means it doesn't it it. I mean, the sound of my instruments have to be to be really what I want, what I expect, the, the crustiness, you know, the rawness of it. And uh, and um, the bass line has to be like simple and effective, like groovy, 
that doesn't have to be like super tight or like like super top level technician bass player. Don't give a shit about that, you know. Um, so, but I, as far as I know, like when you learn music with papers and writing and uh, and reading, it's super cool. But it gives you like you 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 learn music with your eyes and uh, with your fingers but the, but the idea i think like learning with the sampler and like in a very naive way is that you 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 you, ex, you imagine music as as a whole i mean the way i play the fender roads has an effect on the way I will play the bass. And the way I play the bass has an, depends on how I did the guitar and all this stuff. To find mm-hmm. the, the perfect loop which exists in disco music and funk music and reggae music and all the music I do, actually, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I make myself understood <laughs> what I say. No, yeah? you, no you do, you do. And and, and I've, um, I've DJed for a long time and, um, you know, to all different types of, of crowds, but... There's just something that happens when when you hit on that beat. You mentioned, you know, the loop, the one that can just go and go. And like for me, it's just a it's just a feeling of yes, this this is it right here. You know, this is what in the moment I I need. Um, and so I think maybe what you're saying in some way is, you know, you you trust that instinct you have where when you come across that, you know. For whatever you're doing, that's the sound that's going to work at that moment. And I think disco is a perfect example of that because I always come back to new disco or some of the Montreal disco stuff. Um, always, I mean, it's it never fails, and it's because it has that repetitive beat to it. But you can layer onto it so well. You know, you can do yeah, so many and, uh, and, and repetitive perfection. You know, I'm talking thinking about bass lines. You know, repetitive mm-hmm. perfection, like super tight on um, and each each note on the bar it doesn't work. There's no there's no magic in it. You know, the machine could do it, right. and that's why you know. And get back to the first point I was talking about. You know, about electronics uh, or organic. You know, versus organic. I mean, there's no there's no magic in. Uh, industrial food there's no magic in uh, synthesis images you know there's no magic in it because there's no organic like i think it's i think the machines make perfect beats it's very square it's very tight boom buff boom buff because there's no magic in it yeah and that's that's why when miniband comes in and samples like I don't know Marvin Gaye or stuff like this or Crusaders or stuff like that. No, we loop something to make a repetitive stuff on something that is really live. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's played by instruments, this error, voluntary error, you know, like that like right. it's human and living, is repeated. And so, in, insisting on a te- on for example, a bass line, and it's not really square. Yeah. And this is magic, you know, this is ins- insisting on magic. That's why I told you that it's uh, probably a question of, gen- of generation because we've known music, like I've known acid jazz, you know, in the early, uh, in the early 90s, which after, after all, it's quite boring, you know, uh, because it was super clean, super um, inhuman. Life, but in human, and then comes the, the comes the sampler, comes DJ Premier, comes Swin Paul, comes uh, the Jay Dealer, but um, I'm mostly Moody man. And then and then they're looking for the the perfect loop, is a bit dodgy somewhere, you know, a bit right, dodgy. Yeah. Like, and this and and we discover that rawness and dirtiness, and being a bit a little, a little on the side of the bar, creates magic. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I'll, that, that that's why I think like not being a super technician on diff, on the different instruments is a, is a, is a luck <laughs> compared yeah. to someone who would be super tight, you know. That's... Yeah, and it's a pressure too that that you would maybe face in a different way. Um, I used to have a radio show called the Bar Line Shift, and that's one of my favorite musical terms because it it's usually referring to an accident when someone plays a, a chord just before or after it's supposed to, 
And when that happens is usually when something amazing is is going on. And it's something that you you hear and notice, but maybe don't recognize exactly what it is. Um, and I just love that. I love that there's a recognition for when that might happen. It's not something that I think it's talked about a lot, um, but I, I can understand what you're saying. And I've read some things about funk music and dissonance in funk and some classical music too, and that it's the repetition that makes the dissonance yeah. comfortable, yeah. I guess, or something exactly. like that. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. You know, when you listen to the first album by De La Soul, uh, which was the early sampling work by Prince Paul, it's totally crazy because the stuff is totally out of tune. I mean, and uh, and today it would be tuned because the technology allows us, us to tune it. But back in the days, no, they could not. And they said, fuck it. We're going to make this sample, this parliament sample, work with this limestone sample. And it's out of tune. But there's some magic. But it's looped for five minutes. So you get used to it. And so there's some magic coming on. And so your brain by repetition, is able to overcome the, the being in tune or not, which is something okay. that's been tried in music history before, in classical music. But uh, mm-hmm. Monk, uh, telling you Monk, made a revolution by yes. making uh, the, the chords he did. Well, he wasn't allowed to make this chord. His teacher would have uh, <laughs> injured yeah. him. You know what I mean? Uh, but he did. He did. He's trying to find the, the, the trying to find the, the magical error, the, 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 um, which is a kind of something from of a rebel, a kind of re- rebellion in a, in music. I don't, I don't know if you get me. Yeah, I, but but I think yeah, that's what's so interesting. I just finished um, a little while ago reading one of the biographies of Thelonious Monk, and it got into so much about um, his family history and just you know everything surrounding his music and it, it was a good reminder that music is is history and it's it's life and you know he brought so much with him into what he did and and kind of um the era that he was was coming up in so different from now uh in a lot of ways yeah um, that's why you see that's why i see uh i see in in what Tony this monk does with mm-hmm. his piano piano lines you know by using like those two notes like uh, like the the I don't know the 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 B and the the B and the and the C you know like something like, oh, strange you know, and the question of in tune of out of tune stuff in a uh, Prince Paul and uh, the the unsquare looped in J D music or in mm-hmm. Moody Man's music, I think those are stuff that you're not supposed to do like this. It's an it's out of the law you know what I mean. But they do, and uh, and it's and it's it really opens a new field of music, and it, and that's why I think like when you listen to uh, to Upton Funk Empire album, I want to make like my my definition of the sound I want to do is to sound like like the fat fat back band. That's what I'm looking for the oh, sound nice. I'm looking for on this project. You know, it's really what I'm looking for. But I do it in a post-electronic era. So I've learned mm-hmm. from music samplers and electronics. So I know what, what, what we got, what, what, uh, what electronic brought us and samplers brought us, uh, stuff that could, wasn't possible before, but now we do it. And so I try to make like vintage music. I want my song to sound like 70s, but, but I have some more experience. I have an experience of the last 30 years with the introduction of the electronic technique that those guys back in the 70s didn't have. Mm-hmm. There was, there was only this like intuition, uh, this, this, this feeling like anticipating on the future that, uh, James Brad had like saying, okay, we're going to play the fucking same stuff looped for five minutes and only the deed, the, the lead, the horns or the singer will move on it. But the rest, the rhythmic section, you're just like, you're a fucking collective machine, you know? But now we have the fucking collective machine. So we know what, what the loop means. But, um, that, and fat back bend with a more dirty underground, crusty and raw sound, uh, did that like the wiki wacky, you know, this tune is like, like, that's oh, yeah. 
yeah. And, I, and that's why that's why um I mean I mean I tried I make music from this that I want to sound like the seventies, uh, but in an era right now in decades where I've learned from electronic without doing it, without making electronic sounds, you know. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> yeah. No, that no, I totally understand that. Um as you were talking, there's a one of my my all-time favorite uh bands and songs, uh it's Holy Ghost by the Barkays is eight minutes. The the studio version is eight minutes, and it is seriously that same kind of consistent boombastic beat undergirding the whole thing, and it could go for 48 minutes and you'd still be really happy to be listening to it you know and and they were doing some cool things there even before prince was doing adding a little bit of uh some synthesized sound but just like just a touch right on top of of what they were already doing and so i think i think there's always that interesting room to kind of add add different touches of things to maybe build up a sound or give it something slightly different um but it still comes across as what, what you're saying that more natural you know authentic feel yeah because because and it's very um i didn't um I'm, I'm, I, I take the same speech you know for the last 20 years because i feel like like uh like like i told you you know giving giving what is missing mm-hmm. on the field you know like in a fridge you know you're open you know and uh, oh there's no veggies you know oh, i have to buy some veggies there's a lot of fruits I don't need to buy some fruits. Well, a lack of veggies, I'm going to buy some veggies. Well, I feel like there's a lack of uh, organic dance music right now. So that's what I want to do because I feel like I'm going to be more useful. Um, But I really have the feeling day by day and year after year that machines have a lack of understanding of how works a human body especially for dance music and uh i really feel like it's i i hardly find on the dance floor i like to dance but i I can hardly find on electronic music uh musics where my body is uh at ease Mm -hmm. Um, because it's like more because because the machine gives uh, a beat which is square and which 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 I feel like it's a bit like too much authority mm. Mm. and and my body and my mind don't like authority you know what I mean <laughs> I'm um, getting uh, that feeling <laughs> yeah you know you know it's just like just like when you when you call I don't know uh, when you call the council for this reason or what mm. and um, on the phone you know you have a machine and on the phone you have a real person who do you want to talk to when when you when you when your issue you know is quite tight um, um, the, the machine you're a robot the robot won't understand you he, he can't you know it's not in his abilities but a human person may do that and and I feel like the, like dancing and the dance floor is is like um is like a kind of healing, you know. That's where it comes from in a history, you know. Like because the slaves slaves life is so hard that you need you need to have one time in a week, you know. Or, or workers is so hard you need to have some uh, a time in a week where you can release your body and your mind so this is really, this is a question of survival, and uh, I don't want to delegate. Is this question of survival to a robot? Yeah. Right. So okay, so so here's a question then. Where would you how do I want this? What what would you or what do you think then of someone like Giorgio Moroder, you know, Italo Disco synthesizer? He he did so much to pioneer that that synthesized sound, but has been doing that for you know a very long time. Is what he does? What you're talking about, like, is there soul in in his? I think I think if you if we talk about disco music, um, well, there's, there's many there are many tunes of by George Moroder that I like, but at the same on the same, on the other hand, I feel like there is there was disco music before he came in and disco music after he came in, and uh, and I think the 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 
the end of disco music starts when he comes in. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm blaming, I'm blaming him, you know, just, just because, because as, as, because when the feeling, the groove, you know, is directed by a so there's no place for a, a body thing, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So because, because authority comes from just arpeggio on the synthesizers, and this arpeggio in the synthesizer has no soul. So no, I don't, I don't mean I don't like his music, but I think yeah. the feeling I try to find in disco music gets lost with the introduction of this technique. You know? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, I, mean, it doesn't mean it's shit, but it doesn't answer my body need. You know, or yeah. soul need. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's almost as if the music has to have the final word or the control over everything. Maybe in that sense because it is so structured um so in terms of current projects i guess just kind of putting all that together um what are you what are you working on right now is there anything you could share uh Uh, right now i'm working what you did today was working on the next album by a a brazilian singer i'm working with and for and Mm -hmm. i'm touring with him too and uh, he's called joao selva j-o a O Selva S E L V A. And so it's our fourth album. And so I was writing music today and producing music for for the next album. That's what I did. Okay. Very cool. And, and uh, when is and that I've, scheduled to come out? Do you have a, a sense of when uh, that we expect some singles in autumn and uh next year for the album? Because it takes time to to get sure. pressed at the end of the album, I and uh, okay. and uh, I'm I've just ended up sent to the mastering the new album by Voila, which is my uh, African disco music uh, project. Not only disco music, but African project, including a lot of disco music. And uh, Voila, V O I L A A. Uh, so uh, just ended up with two double LP, which is a lot of work. So I'm glad it's done, and I'm I'm touring with this band too uh, in Europe. Yeah, that's why I'm and uh, I'm preparing a new uh, album for under the name Mr. President, which is disco music also. Love and, Mr. President. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. I'm, yeah, <laughs> and which is kind of what I do under the name Mr. President also uh, today is, is a bit like. That uh, like the um, what I did under the name Upton Funk Empire because the problem with Upton Funk Empire is that the the label that released the record I'm not really in good terms with them. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, that's why it's a bit shitty, you know, to use this name. So I I use the name for the remixes, but uh, if I want to release an album by Upton Funk Empire, I have to sell this low case, which is like oh. uh, super annoying, you know. I don't wake up in the morning saying I want to go for a, for a lock. You know what I mean? So, um, but I love I love this album. I think it's my one of my best albums I did. Yeah. Um, one last thing I kind of wanted to chat about before um, we wrap up, and thank you so much again for this. Is you'd mentioned touring? Um, I was curious, you know, for you if if the experience of performing. Uh, in front of of a you know a crowd, do you feel you're able to do the same things that you can achieve in the studio, or does it even matter because you know you're you're doing something different? Do you feel like they have to be the same, or is there room uh, when it you're? Depends. It depends on um, on the projects. Um, I like the for dance floor music. I like the idea of DJs. I like the idea of DJs because there's nothing to watch, so it's just like. Yeah, uh, um, so it's just like so it helps when there's nothing to watch, you can pay more attention to how your body responds to the music by dancing, you know, by dancing and for dancing. So, I like the idea, I think like DJs are super, super, super useful for dance music, but on the same, on the other hand, that's why voila, I'm touring at a sound system version, you know, so there's a DJ, there's I play keyboards and percussions, and uh, and we have a, a singer improvising. 
So it's not like a live band because it would make a 10 P disposition band and it would be impossible. But so I think like DJs are super important for, for, uh, I prefer dance, the dance music I, pr I, I produce, like disco music. I prefer it to be played by DJs and live than to make a live because it would, it doesn't work. You, you, your body doesn't feel the same way when you have to watch a show, you know? Um, but I have, I'm touring live with a five, uh, piece band as a bass player for Joao Selva, the, the Brazilian singer. But mm -hmm. this is soul music. This is Brazilian soul music. So, so it's a moment. It's not only dance. It's a, a human moment of exchanges of, uh, soul music. So emotions, uh, dance, uh, feelings, sadness, all the stuff, saudade. All the stuff that are in this music. I don't know if I uh, answer your question, but um, yeah. But, yeah. But I think you know when, when I've seen Chic on stage like two years ago. To be honest, it was shit. It was shit. It was like all the music was played like super powerful, like like super like like uh, pretentious. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't soulful. It had like super lights, heavy show, blah 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 blah. So. No place for the body and the soul, you know? Um, so if, and at the same time, when I uh, hear uh, Rapper's Delight, uh, or when I hear uh, I Want Your Love by Chic, played by a DJ on the dance floor, this is absolutely fantastic. So their music is better on by a DJ than live, for example. <laughs> yeah. And it's the best, and it's the best uh, disco band ever. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much good stuff. Um, well, I, I want to thank you so much. Um, and you know what? Um, maybe as as the year moves on and some of those projects you mentioned um, are released, I would totally love to chat with you again about those and we can, um, you know, maybe get into those recordings. Um, so I really love what you do and, and I feel that connection. And so um, I really appreciate being able to, you know, talk to you about that and, and just hear directly what what you get out of that process. So um, thank you so much. Well, it's super, it's super nice for me like, to see like people, like 15 years after the release of a record, like people are still into it. You know, yeah. like it's, well, this is super nice to hear and to, you know, it, because, because like music that lasts, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's an idea, which is really nice for a musician. The idea that after 15 years, my record is still, it's a place of interest for people, you know, it's something very, really nice to think about. You know? Awesome. Well, well, thank you again. And I will follow up with you um, mm -hmm. uh, soon. And then also when we have, um, you know, some of those shorter clips, which we'll post and they'll be available anywhere people would get a podcast to listen to. Um, so we'll make sure that you have all that. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Amanda. Bye-bye. If you are enjoying All That Jam, please like and subscribe to our social media channels at All That Jam Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our website, allthatjampod.com. Make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes. Also, look for full interviews on our YouTube channel. And remember, stay beautiful, but don't stay underground too long.